Coming up, I unmasked the horror. So we're going to talk about that live from the Bob Varley studio in Orlando, Florida. This is the Universal Edition of The Diz Unplugged. This is episode 102 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. Dreams Unlimited Travel, that is. Experts at helping you plan the perfect universal vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Universal Edition Podcast. I am your host, Craig Williams, and today I am joined alongside by Rhino Clavin. Hello. Hello. And then back on the controls, Oliver Green. Uh, yes. Hey. Hi guys. Welcome back. There we like go. Austin because Powers I have my things. mic muted uh, for a second. So hello everyone. I apologize. Oh, welcome. <laughs> Hi. How are we doing today? I'm good. How are uh, you? I'm doing great. Awesome. So, How are you, Rhino? Nice. How are you doing? Awesome. Cool. Good to know. <laughs> so it's so nice to see you guys. It's been such a long time. I'm happy to yourself. do this again. And uh, I just, yeah. I'm very but can we do this again? Wrong, wrong oh. show. Wrong show. Uh, oh. But it's okay. Oh. So, yeah. This is going to be a an episode. I'll tell you that for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, this is... It's nice to do this. Uh, last week, of course, we did not go out live because... Uh, where were you guys? California, that's right. Halloween Horror Nights Disney World. That's not the right word. That's d- d- one, of the, one Nights, of the right words. Hollywood and Disneyland. Close enough. Okay. I'm going to let Oliver Universal describe it. Universal Studios Hall- Orlando, Florida. Halloween Horror Nights, it. Universal Hollywood, and Mickey's Halloween Party, Disneyland. There we go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's exactly what I said. Okay. Very good. Yes. <laughs> uh, just two different ways. Um, yeah. So you guys were out there for that. You had a, a very good time from what I could tell. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Tons tons and tons of videos going up on both the... Uh, Lots of screaming. The Diz YouTube channel, youtube.com slash WDW info, as well as uh, a little bit more of your thoughts and opinions on the event on youtube.com slash Diz Unplugged. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, I, I've seen what's out there so far and the rest of y'all... Uh, you, you're gonna have to see it as it comes out, uh, but it's all worth the wait. There's some funny, funny stuff happening there. Um, but yes, it's you have that to look forward to, and uh, I believe next week we are going to go in depth on Halloween Horror Nights Hollywood. See, I you screwed me up. What? With all you're saying it wrong over and over again, so I had to actually think about what the event was. But yes, we're gonna you're gonna be talking all about that next week, right? Yes, I'll yeah. tell you. Know, I, I <laughs> hope so. Yes, we'll be talking about that next week. What do I have to always be the person who answers? You, because... Normally, we can't shut you up. That's why I got to you. There you go. <laughs> and I didn't go to the event, so I can't really talk about it. Um, I loved it. What well, spoiler? Don't alert. no spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> Uh, yes, but next week, spoilers. Lots of spoilers. I mean, just watch the videos. They're spoilers. But that's mm-hmm. because they're nicer and you're actually allowed to film in their houses. So I attempted to, for those of yeah. you that will watch. I tried my hardest. <laughs> and that's all you can do. <laughs> yeah. The videos are fun. <laughs> just, like, they make me laugh. I was so sick on Monday. And when I get to the parts where you're screaming, it makes me laugh quite a bit. Quite a bit. So, yes, of course, you will, uh, as I said, you'll have that. Wow, you're going to have to stop laughing like that. It's really creeping me out. Uh, we'll have all of that coming up for you. I'm thinking about when you, ooh, like when you sh- the camera shakes in your hand, grabs the wall, sorry. We'll have that all for you next week. I'm excited to hear about it more. I- I've already heard all the stories. I know everything, but... It'll still be a good episode, nonetheless. So, before we talk about everything this episode on the Unmasking the Horror Tour, I would like to throw it out there for any housekeeping. Anyone you met 
it horror nights in Hollywood? Anything like that? Any anything? Tyler and his girlfriend Katrina. We saw them on that night. We did, but we're friends with them. So, but it was always nice to see them on Tyler's home turf because he covers Universal Studios Hollywood. Not mm-hmm. for us. Another another great site though. No, but yeah, InsideUniversal.net. <laughs> Check them out. One that I also follow. Listen, if we were if we were out there. We would try to cover it as well as they do, but we're not. So that's where I go for all of my Hollywood information. They do a fantastic job. There's a shout out to also there was a group of people on the VIP tour when we went in the morning who said they watched the show. Oh, that's But awesome. I can't, I don't remember their names because there was a couple of them, but they weren't in our tour. They were in another tour. Thank God. They would have been hearing your salty pirate talk all the day. <laughs> I've just got visions of him was walking I around s- the house. He's going, yar, <laughs> <laughs> every time he got scared. <laughs> And I wasn't salty pirate talking during the day either. Like, yeah. what am I like? Ah, this is a movie studio here. You do, as we were. There dis- be actors here, as we were dis- <laughs> as we were discussing before the show started. You know, you you Boston area people, you just you know, oh. throwing words left and right. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I describe a Boston accent as a pirate accent. It's a, you have the manners of pirates. That's <laughs> you, you said it yourself earlier. You were direct off of the boat. You were the original person <laughs> in Boston. There, just, so. I mean, just me, yeah. Therefore, it was a one boat. I came pirates. in a rowboat. Not to be confused with Fresh Off the Boat Yes, on ABC. Ding! <laughs> um, we are in no way endorsed by ABC. Uh, so, well, that's, that's awesome. I'm glad you guys got to meet some cool people out there. I want to go over a couple... Uh, little, not necessarily housekeeping type things, but uh, stuff among the sorts of that before we jump into uh, before we jump into today's topic. And that's the first thing I want to mention is, did we all see the news on this year's Mardi Gras? No, no bro. No. Okay. Well, uh, so Universal Mardi Gras event that usually starts at the beginning of February and run through a- runs through April. Is seeing some big changes this year. What changes? Well, this year, instead of happening on select nights, you know, weekends, mm-hmm. Saturdays, every Saturday for that time period, sometimes Fridays, sometimes Sundays, but you know that, well, that's all changing this year. This year, the event will run from February 4th through March 24th, and every single night... Wow! In between that time, we'll have the Mardi Gras parade, a one of the New Orleans authentic bands playing in the French courtyard area, mm-hmm. and all the food will be available during that time. But not a performer every time. Not not a headlining concert. There will still be twelve headlining concerts happening throughout that uh, that course of I hope they get two Adam months. Lambert again. I I mean it's I'm, on a good show. I don't I don't, don't really roll your don't eyes care at me. Get. I don't care who they get. They as long as they get nice, nice big acts to throw in. Um, I did the math. At least compared to last year's event, there were fourteen performers. I believe this year there will only be twelve. So we are losing two. So hopefully that means a couple of the acts are a little bit more uh, bigger. They get, or they get big stuff sometimes. Like Kelly Clarkson's been there more than once now, I, and that's a that's like. You pay a lot of money to go see Kelly Clarkson on a regular concert. I know. And, of course, it is included right with your yeah, that's the Universal, part. as long as you have a ticket for Universal Studios Florida. So if you went to Islands of Adventure that day um, and you don't have the park hopper, that won't really help you. But uh, it is it is a really, uh, it's a really cool thing that they're changing up. And in my opinion... I wrote the news article on it, so I will throw out my opinion again. I think this is actually a great change because my my personal favorite part of Mardi Gras isn't the concerts. It's the parade. I think the Mardi Gras parade actually might be my favorite parade that happens in Orlando. Mm -hmm. I know you said that before. I did. I don't think I've ever really appreciated it for what it is, to be honest. So We're going to throw beads from that. We're going to throw beads from it, you and I. Oh. And Greg. Do we have to flash our this i don't want no. well gosh you mean, mm. no I, I, on it I, i've said it before and i'll say again why a the floats are colorful fun unique design there's always some sort of there, there's usually an interactive element in some of it whether it's the day of the dead float with the, the fire effects that shoot out of the back or whenever we had the train float that all the smoke came out of it and I, they're just really creative i love the the beat and 
involvement on there, whether you're on the on the float actually throwing the beads, which is just it's always a damn good time anytime you're on there throwing the beads. Les uh, les bon temps I I've some of my best guarantee. <laughs> les les bon temps <laughs> uh, some of my best moments have ever been uh being on the floats throwing beads it's always so fun and then you, you just watch people go insane for these cheap cheap beads at the event like it's it, it's a guaranteed hit um so the fact that now instead of only getting however many times you know 14 15 16 times to see that parade now they have 49 times that you can actually see this parade wow which is that's that's a big step up and not only that but it means the people who are employed in entertainment to work on this parade now they don't have to worry about what they're doing throughout the uh other nights that the event isn't happening they know because i'll just be honest with this there's not really a lot of call for stilt walkers outside mm-hmm. of the uh the universal world so all those stilt walkers there will have a lot uh, of work happening at that time but um yeah with also changing it this way if you are one of the people who has the now seasonal pass um the details in the seasonal pass just says that if you uh if you have the seasonal pass the only block out dates during mardi gras are days there's actually a concert so uh I think with it being said that way, they will actually be able to see on all the days that there isn't a concert, which is nice if you did buy that that low version of the pass. And yeah, so I I'm looking forward to it. Oliver, you you kind of made it seem like you haven't really done Mardi Gras. Yeah. Only in passing, I've seen the parade kind of like I never stood there and watched it. I think I was always like in line for an attraction or something. I never stood there enough to appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Um, so no, I got on my way this year after your stellar review, telling me it's your favorite um, parade in Orlando. So yeah, I yeah, it's it's a can't miss this year for me now, and yeah. I'll let you know what I think. Sometimes we agree. Sometimes Very good. We don't. Yeah, I know, I know. That's fun. So that is the first big thing i wanted to discuss with that uh, and of course if you're looking to come down during mardi gras come down. dreams unlimited travel okay ding so moving on to the next subject there is some other interesting news i didn't write a story about it but of course if you watched the episode a couple weeks ago what we'll talk about hollywood next week i was just we'll about, about to say i'm we'll not talk about talking hollywood about next week uh if you if you paid attention to the show a couple weeks ago whenever we had christopher ripley on uh the the genius genius man who knows everything there is to know about halloween horror nights um over on his blog hhn unofficial posted a very interesting thing uh regarding jk rowling getting upset Mm. so the first nights of the event they were projecting lights onto the London facade. Oh. And apparently, you know, we've kind of, we went lighting it up or were they like, they were doing like kind of like the weird lighting on it. Not like just normal, normal lighting. It was, you know, on HHN nights, how like men in black gets a special lighting in the New York section. They have all the, special projection mapping lighting kind of not on that fancy level but just different kind of eerie lighting on it well with that being said um the photos apparently got to her and she got pissed off because in the i guess in the orlando and hollywood contracts they are not allowed to touch anything Halloween. They're not allowed to touch anything Wizarding World during Horror Nights. This is. It wasn't even open in Hollywood. They yeah. had it like barricaded up yeah. and everything. Which is in. I in two years ago, I noticed that it was just it's dead. Like there's you know there's nothing to do with Halloween Horror Nights there at all. Two years ago, but I'm confused because like she's she obviously had to agree to um, the terms and conditions that you know they came up on in Japan, where Universal Japan, where they're offering the, isn't it isn't it certain like Harry Potter themed. Yeah, they have the they have the Death Eater yeah. experience. They definitely went all out decorating. There is something that's there is something that's weird. 
and all of this because they do have all those extra elements, but yet ours, you know, we were lucky enough to even get it open, get Diagon Alley open, but apparently that's not even if something messes up again, she's taking that back off the uh. table. Because if you remember the first year, um, it just opened up. It's been open now. This is a third HHN. It's been around. The first year, it was completely closed off. Yeah. Um, the second year, it was finally opened up and people could go through. And now, you know, it's apparently, from what uh, Chris wrote on there, it's even like talking about like there will be people set up to make sure no one can walk through the London area at all during HHN. I don't get it at all. I, I, I completely understand why she wouldn't want like half dead people jumping out in the middle of like her creation, especially when they've, you know, done it so well. But it's the lighting itself. Cause you know, like I've seen it, there's nothing about it. I can remember where I was like, Oh, well, that's offensive. It just ties in the theme. It makes that it brings in that outside London facade and ties it in with the rest of the event that's going on. There's nothing there that says Halloween horror nights specifically. So I'm kind of, struggling to see why she's so upset to be honest um it's that cross-pollination thing it's she's a it, the, the whole reason why disney didn't get it is they never wanted to see mickey mouse in harry potter robes and so if any the fear is that over time they're going to slowly try to slip in some sort of crossbreeding oh. i slowly yeah. i mean it's interesting slowly. It, it's it's all very interesting I, I think she needs to chill out a little bit. Yeah. Special lighting on the London side. I'm sorry, but you know, with the exception of the fact that you have Grimald Place there and Creature looking out the window, and you have the you have the night bus. Um, you know, for me, it's it's supposed to be London. Yeah. So. And that's scary that's, enough at any time walking through yeah. at night. So. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> that is what it is, but. Apparently, that is not the only person of celebrity status that may be upset about things happening at Halloween Horror Nights. And that will transition us into the actual conversation about Unmasking the Horror mm. and my whole experience for it. So, people want to know what Unmasking the Horror is to begin with? Well, it's basically a daytime tour it's that bad. is offered on uh, Halloween Horror Nights days. Um and it is either a all day tour, all day in air quotes, um, but it, it can either be a morning tour, an afternoon tour, or an all day tour. And basically, what happens is you get to go into a select number of the houses with the lights on. So uh, if you do the all day, you get to see six houses. If you do the morning or the afternoon tours, you get to do three houses, and the houses could be different. So let's say you start off, you dip your toes in the water, only do the, the morning tour. If you go back and you want to do the afternoon tour, could be uh, could be the different set of houses. So anything is, of course, subject to change. Um, and that is partially where this conversation is going is that the big benefit of this tour was that you got to go into these houses with the lights on and take all of the pictures that you could ever possibly want to in some of these iconic houses um well that is no longer the case uh as of this past weekend the first weekend you could take all the pictures you want then this past weekend uh it was changed so that no pictures are being allowed in the intellectual property houses. Did somebody do something inappropriate? The big rumor that is going around right now is that someone was being very inappropriate with pictures in, or in potentially not. There's there's a couple rumors. One is that someone was being intentionally inappropriate with one of the Reagan, uh, one oh, of the Reagans God. in the Exorcist <laughs> maze. The other rumor is that it doesn't have anything to do with someone doing something imp- inappropriate. It was just that people were posting the pictures in there. And the the one rumor that I saw via Chris is that uh, that it potentially got back to someone like Linda Blair or someone involved with The Exorcist, and they weren't necessarily happy about the representation. Um, wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they just do like just stop you from taking photos in The Exorcist house then? Because they don't want to start a whole chain of events where people it starts becoming a thing that other people know JK and her and then well it's just any of them these intellectual property houses have become the draw of Halloween Horror Nights and 
Um, you know, we've we've come to find out with other people telling us, yes, the reason we don't get the Walking Dead characters inside the house is because it's, you know, their likenesses aren't allowed to be used. And that's okay. why we're not seeing them. Um, in the cases of some of these intellectual property, uh, in some of these intellectual property houses, you know, where you have Regan used as kind of a dummy because... Uh, there's no other way to really uh, portray her. They do his characters, but in some of the stuff like her head turning around, mm. you just you can't do that with a real person. But they use it in other houses too. They use it. They use dummies in Halloween. They okay. they use them all over. So it's better to um, it, it's better to just make sure that you're not pissing off these intellectual mm. properties, and they pull out and they never want their the characters to be used again than to uh than to you know no i get that yeah, yeah. i just it, have you seen the photo this inappropriate photo oh, have you Reagan? found it no I'm i, not, I no. haven't okay so oh, okay there's no specifics say, we don't know what they were actually <laughs> no doing. i have a, it, as far as i know it's just all all rumors here uh, okay say. all right um I was waiting to see if we knew what the specifics were because I have the air horn lined up. So oh. I was going. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Someone was being inappropriate with Reagan. No, no, no. That's you. Great. <laughs> no, we, uh, we, I, I don't know. It's all it, uh, even uh, people in entertainment. I'm. <laughs> it can't be worse than this photo of the no, that's the, an official. the promotional official yeah. photo of like clearly what our. I don't mean this in a rude way, but several of the gayest cast members that work at Universal Orlando reacting to Reagan spinning her head around. <laughs> yeah. I, you've seen that photo myself. Well, I, I, I completely agree. Here? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, you probably just know them from your other dating apps. <laughs> so, Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now these photos are no longer allowed. You are the one, in, the one non-intellectual property house that is being offered in the tour uh, right now is... Um, is Ghost Town, The Curse of Lightning Gulch, and you are allowed to take all of the photos you want in there. And so that is uh, that is still there for it. But um, that kind of come that comes full circle to the, the point of this tour. So it's not it's not cheap. It's uh, if you want to do the morning or the afternoon tour, it's seventy five dollars uh, plus tax per person. And then for the combo tour, it's one hundred twenty dollars per person plus tax and uh, after tax and everything, I did the the combo tour to see all of them. They charged my credit card around 140 total. So that's that's a significant amount of money. Um, they do they do have uh, one gift for you if you sign up. You oh. get the uh, this year's lanyard. Oh, so like the one that <laughs> yeah. uh, Oliver purchase that we know with an ap discount it's like 901 it's yep it's nine dollars and one cent um so it's uh, for anyone who doesn't have that discount it's it's ten dollars so i guess you can subtract ten dollars off the price and that's what you're paying yeah. for the tour um but yeah the the um it, it's promised that the combo tour will be four to five hours and the tours by themselves, if you do the morning or afternoon, they are two to two and a half hours. Now, this has kind of also shifted now that you're not allowed pictures because there's just there's only so much to do. You know, they were they were allowing a lot of extra time for pictures going through these houses before. Uh, so they've they are really they're really struggling to figure out how Jeez, this Louise. is going to work it best. I was going to say, do you yeah, want yeah. to address because you, it's really picking okay, up. Okay, <laughs> yeah, if you can hear the sound, it's it's raining very hard. It's not lightning. At least we can't hear it if it's thundering too with it. So I can never hear lightning. We, we Yeah, you can't hear <laughs> lightning. But the thunder follows the lightning. Um, <laughs> they come out of night. Listen, thunder, thunder only happens when it's raining. <laughs> thunder only. I'm, I, uh, man, I wish I, I would just have a tambourine permanently under here for whenever we queue up our <laughs> singing sessions from now on. Oh my god, I am definitely doing that. <laughs> we can we can we can make that happen. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> fantastic. Uh, <laughs> so so what do they do to fill gosh. the time, or is it just cut short now? I you said know. you said they budgeted so much picture taking time that like, do you feel like? It just ends a lot earlier, and you don't feel like you got as much 
bang well, for the that's where. Or? So who does this tour really? What who does it sell to? Well, first off, I think it can sell to fans who have been to the event many times have done it over and over again and they want to experience the event in a new way yes you can try to experience the event in a vip tour an rip tour or uh you know maybe doing express if you've never really sprung for that before but in terms of seeing a little bit more this is definitely a way to get a new taste of the event also i think for all those people out there who say you know i want to go but i'm just too afraid mm. well this is the thing that we have praised and we've said it many times uh we almost appreciate the beauty and the detail in these houses more than the, the screams and the scares itself. This is the ultimate way to do so. Uh, you, you really get to take your time, go through each, each house, and look at all the props and the design really up close. You're not allowed, you're not allowed to touch, but you're allowed to like really, really get in there like and, and see everything. And you this, know? this is actually going to be one of my questions for you. When, because you know, a big part of that set design and that experience that you have is the lighting. When that lighting is off and you just have the house lights on inside yeah. those sound studios, does it still hold up? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, but you also get to see the, the tricks. So how they, you know, you really get to see how they make it happen. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it's very, very interesting for that. So I was with uh, my friend Emily doing this tour. She was on my ABD honeymoon. Not the person I went with on that. I went with Kylie on my honeymoon. <laughs> but she was also in the tour as well. And um, and so, yeah, she's really into design. Like, she, uh, she, she brought it down. I didn't get a chance to see it. But, like, for Mickey's Not So Scary, she actually designed book from Hocus Pocus with Ooh. a working working eye and everything in that's it. cool and like she likes to tinker with that kind of stuff so she was really interested to go and see all the houses with the lights on to Dang. see how they're making these effects see that happen book. um i'll show you she's got a video of it on her facebook out, so i'm gonna I'll show make you that the, after. i'm gonna make that book for diz yeah i never thought of make, about making the eye move it's very cool she's very good at making that stuff she's been working on a bb8 as well too so mm. um lots lots of cool stuff so um yeah but anyways that that was her intent my intent to go on this tour was kind of to see the to take the pictures i wanted to see all this stuff but i really wanted to take pictures so it was a bummer for me being told that you weren't allowed to however if you cancel it based on the fact you can't take pictures now they are doing a full refund um so even if you show up oh, okay even if you show up without if you are one of the people who hasn't heard about it yet pretty much everyone has it's been all over social media uh, for the past week now but if you don't know about it for some reason show up find it out frantically search the web can i get a refund yes as long as you don't take the tour you can get a refund this was not a choice by guest services in the the tours this was this was put into place by entertainment the the upper executives behind mm -hmm. universal entertainment they did not they made this choice and tours is suffering because of it um, mm. because people are unhappy with it. So uh, definitely, if you have an issue with it, make sure that they uh, make sure that you leave your feedback with guest services and uh, whether it's calling, stopping in, letting them know. The only way to really get these kind of changes is if enough people are upset with it and especially if they start canceling, there's going to have to be a change to it. Mm. So all of that being said let's talk about the tour itself and what i went through um so the tour i did the combo tour as i said before it starts at 10 30 and the meeting place is outside the blue man group theater so for those of you who struggle with finding your way through they do have uh lots of signage pointing to it uh very easy to find because well it says unmasking the horror or halloween horror nights unmasking the horror with a nice big red arrow pointing to where you need to go and uh the check-in for the event luckily is inside uh a nice little soundstage area kind of kind of just designed in a little like creepy fashion um and not lots of tables to sit down get comfortable while you're waiting for the event check-in starts at 10 the tours start at 10 30 uh, we didn't go off until a little bit later, though. But already the the cool part of the tour to begin with was that since the meeting place is in the Blue Man Group, you get to start off by walking through 
the the back hallways and stuff oh, of there. Cool. And of course, Blue Man Group Theater used to be Nickelodeon Studios. Yeah. And so there Ooh. are you get to see little little hidden touches still that say like Nickelodeon Studios on it. And the first the first time I saw anything that said Nickelodeon Studios, I just got giddy all of a sudden because I was never lucky enough to to visit there whenever it was the Nickelodeon Studios. Oh, it was cool. Did you take any photos cool. of it? Like anything that said? No, that's because then you still have to you have to keep in mind that that is a backstage area yeah. and technically no photos are allowed. Well, there comes thunder. Only happens, happens when, when it's raining. raining. When it's raining. Those are not the words. I well. Did How you know, is that know what words? we were singing? It rains. I am so lost. We were singing a Fleetwood Mac song. What were you singing? Thunder <laughs> only happens when it's raining. No? Well, that he kept going off on the end and he like went Players falsetto for some only reason. Love um, you when they play. <laughs> I like that you do the John Ralphio. <laughs> and that, folks, is what we call dead air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please don't go. Please don't. Think <laughs> the don't don't abandon yeah. the show. Do not abandon the show at this point. Keep listening. It gets better, I promise. Yeah, it's just very, very big dead air. So. I'm um, telling you, the tambourine would have been perfect right there. So here we go. <laughs> Let's go through. And um, there was a catch with the whole photos thing. Besides Lightning Gulch, as I said, we could take photos. Uh, we were allowed to take photos of the facades before we went into the actual house. So the first house we started with was the Exorcist. Um, and I've got to give... I, I'm, I'm going to try to be as completely unbiased with this review as possible because... One of my personal friends, Megan, was the tour guide for this, and uh, she's really great. I've known her for a very long time, um, and she did a fantastic job um, because part of the tour isn't just seeing these details. I apologize. Uh, just, just scrolling around. <laughs> uh, part, of, part of this tour isn't just seeing the details. It's also the tour guides are all um, – they all – they learn – the basic history about the story of each one and, and know those facts. But uh, like, if you're going to still do the tour and I, I would highly recommend trying to get it done by Megan because she is Halloween Horror Nights obsessed um, as well as just movie obsessed and, mm -hmm. and pop culture obsessed. So uh, last year you may have seen making the rounds on the internet. Uh, there was some, a girl who was, was uh, creating these uh, Jack the clown bows oh, that's for cool. people. She is the one who did it. She is oh, awesome. absolutely obsessed with this. So she she takes the time to know all of these. And so like the the knowledge came across right away whenever we walk into the exorcist house cuz she starts going in depth on the story and even pointing out like she to know so much. She's she's read the book before too. Um nice. and that that takes effort, you know. <laughs> Rhino and I read books. You don't know about books, though. <laughs> you mean Rhino can read? I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so... And this this will be... If you're taking the tour, I highly recommend uh, turning this off at this point because I am going to kind of go into spoiler territory. I know the majority of people who are watching and listening aren't going to do this. So I want to share some of the insights that you learn on the tour so that way people understand. And, of course, different guides are going to say different things about it. Um but that's just that's just the case. So yeah, we we started off, and the first thing she really got into was you know you walk into the house, and the first thing you're confronted with is that beautiful room where it's it looks like you're just walking through the house, but then it's just intricate scrims. So whenever the lighting flashes and changes, you see all of the demons mm -hmm. behind it, mm -hmm. and um, that's like where she really got going into the first tidbit of the demon in the exorcist has a name i guess that's something you find out more from the second movie from the second movie and the rest um but in terms of like, yeah pazuzu yeah and that's something that i didn't know not about. captain howdy because reagan calls herself yeah refers him as captain howdy exactly bit. in the uh in the whenever she's talking about her friend or whatever that she's she's speaking yeah, to, to it's Ouija captain board. howdy yeah uh, but so that's, you know, when you learn that Pazuzu is this uh, 
It's the kind of demon that is from the southwest winds causing sickness and plague and all that. And, you know, that's that theme is then represented further along how you get into the house. And, you know, she was even throwing in tidbits about how the band Gorillaz has used Pazuzu in some of their cartoons and stuff, Mm, which is like, so I had to go back and look and yeah, there, of course, there it was. But, um, but yeah, just just getting to see a lot of the Exorcist up close. Uh, one of the, like the coolest little details that we saw in the house was, you know, they used a lot of the houses. I'll tell you, they just pull props from IKEA. There really? is really? so much IKEA going on in these houses, right down the street. <laughs> but like for the Exorcist, uh, you know, they have all these bedroom scenes that all need to have like the same furniture and stuff in there, and they were able to like find these dressers that were all kind of, I don't want to say too old, but they were all very, they were all the same. They mm-hmm. were all very authentic, but they weren't brand new. And so that kind of, that gives you an idea of how hard uh, creative works to really get these houses to be as detailed as possible. And like other things in this house that I, I thought were very cool was you don't really see it whenever the lights are off but whenever it's on it makes sense so uh as you transition through the different bedroom scenes uh once you get into the room where you have like the spider walk happening yeah that's whenever all the walls it's after the uh the the pea soup scene happens and everything all the walls start to transform to like a dark green and very black and that's to really signify whenever Regan's really starting to turn into that feverish dream behind like the whole exorcism. Hmm. Uh, that's they're the possession. Sorry. And so that's something like you really can't, you can't see it whenever you're going through the house on a normal night. But whenever you're seeing it with the lights off, it's like, it's just such a little subtle nod that works out perfectly. And um, one of, one of the cool details too, that I, I didn't really notice walking through, on a normal night, but you totally notice it whenever, uh, whenever the lights are all on. But like the the scrim work that they have to use to make the the ceilings all seem like they're so much higher in those big sound stages. Uh, it's it's just it's not just what you see on the the ground level. It's also you have to look up and around. Uh, and they do such a good job of hiding it with the lighting and everything else. But the one one scene to really look at that is like in the in the levitating scene mm. to see how they actually work with above because you're looking up at Regan while she's floating there. And uh, but the best the best part of this was actually being able to truly see the transition into the ending of our Exorcist Maze, which follows the movie very closely. But then it takes a turn at the end where you actually go out the window with. Um, with Father, is, is he Marin? Uh, or is it is the old one Marin? The old one is Marin. I'm one. sorry. Um, the younger one is. is uh, my gosh, I just, I, just, I, I just was just looking his name. Uh, Karis. Fair, Karis. Yes, yes. So you know, in ours, it ends with going out the window with him, and then you know we got to see the the demon hell essentially yeah i thought that was lit up and all the way through but uh that's that's part of the you also get this story they uh they they didn't want to just end the maze in such a boring way yeah with just going out the window and then it's over they really wanted to to introduce you into the actual hell to really really keep the story full swing to go from that first room where pazuzu uh pazuzu first takes over to then seeing the pazuzu back in hell so that's how they wanted to bookend everything. Uh, very, very interesting maze, to say the least. Mm-hmm. And I like that. Sorry, I'm just like using a couple seconds to get some spit back into my my mm. mouth. Uh, of mm. course, this is, this is going to be a very Craig-heavy episode because I was the only one there. Y'all were out in California having fun. Screaming like we were back here. Working hard. So the uh the the next thanks house that we went to though was ghost town the curse of lightning gulch gulch and this one i have lots of pictures of because of course this was the only house that we are allowed to um but i was happy that we got to see this house because this was my favorite 
of the uh, the original property houses. And one of my, yeah, for and sure. as we said the last week, that was my favorite house of the event right now. Uh, and I'll say this actually got taken up another notch just because of it. Because right away, the first thing that we were told whenever we're walking in this house is um, is that all the all of the skeletons you see they're all they're all dressed it's not like there's just cheesy skeletons being hung up all over the place Spooky, scary um, skeletons. it's they're they're being hung up and they're wearing their clothes but that's because they all have clothes on because then as you're making your way through the maze their ghosts will also be wearing the clothes that they're wearing so that really brings it uh, the story full circle that you have the the bodies but then you also see the ghosts which yeah, I, that's, that's a cool something detail cool f- fun to look for the next time i go through because i've only done it that one time on media night so like i kind of don't remember anything other than what went through the lens of the camera you know like i have to watch back the video or something but yeah um i think that's a nice effect yeah i do too i i think it's it's very cool and um what i like even more is that uh that ghost town i didn't realize i mean we were told that it was the whole it was the recall maze because they've done ghost town before and now they're doing it again but even last year we found out there was a little tidbit there was a ghost town reference in the walking dead house last year that unless you've like i i don't know who would ever Mm. know this you'd have to be like the uber uber fan like uh chris yeah well there was uh apparently in the whole ghost town lore there's a marshal uh, um, the marshal, the sheriff, whatever you want to call it. And Girl. last year in the prison scene in The Walking Dead, they had a, a reference to the marshal from Ghost Town in there. So it was kind of cool that then they brought in Ghost Town this year as it was like almost a precursor. I mean, but that makes me think like maybe there are these little nods next this yeah. every year to what might be coming next I've year. I literally just thought that next time I'm going through the houses, I'm going to be, well, I won't, I'll be terrified, but I'm going to start looking for other stuff that seems slightly out of place just to see if I can get some hints. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I like no. this little Easter egg. I, I, that's what, at least what I'm going to pay attention and doing. And then one of the other cool things that I think about this house, this was like the first time we really got to see it, but, um, you know, we, we talk about the characters, of course, coming out and how that all happens. Well, this was where we got to learn a little bit about the actual triggers, how everything happens with that. So um, there are, I found this out, there are three ways that oh. scares actually happen in the houses. The first one, they're all activated triggers. There is the actor activated trigger, also known as a AAT. There is a guest activated trigger, and then there is a non activated trigger. So, tell me the differences, Craig. To break that down, the guest activated trigger is one where a guest will interact with a prop or something in the environment, and it will actually activate a scare okay. or something in general. So, uh, kind of to wrap your head around this idea, think about um, outside indiana jones adventure at hollywood studios how there's the rope that says don't pull Mm -hmm. and if you pull it then you'll start hearing the no no Mm. same idea in this house there is one in particular inside tomb of the ancients that if you pull on a certain object you will get an activated scare oh so So i won't encourage you to touch stuff yeah. In some circumstances, yeah. Don't don't break fingers off the props and stuff. As I saw going through, that happened a lot. But um, these, uh, I saw them a couple years ago when they did Giggles and Gore, the kind of clown house that was in the disaster queue. They had a couple uh, guest activated triggers in there, and so I knew about those. I now I know where the one in Tomb of the Ancients is now. I haven't got a chance to use it yet, but that's cool. I will this time. So that's a cool one. Obviously the the. Um, the actor activated triggers is the pedals that they have on the floor. So it literally, if you've, you know, if you've seen like a guitar pedal that or they use or sewing machine, pedal. sewing machine, yeah. pedal, anything like that, scare actor presses it and they know the timing for whenever they're going to go out and then scare. And that's how it happens. And then of course, a non-activated one is whenever it all just is built around timing with the music and the lighting. So I, you know, I loved it. There was, I love that there's many, uh, many different ways to see this. But I, th- I think the coolest thing about the house was just uh, just getting to see how big and massive and expansive it was. There is a lot of just 
like the really wide open moments that we were so impressed with before. It was cool to be able to see them with the lights on and just see how big and massive it was in the detail. There's like even some of the the skeletons hanging out in there. They still had their mustaches on. And this is the stuff you're not going to look at whenever you are going around. Well, sometimes I feel like, rushed, not, you know, because exactly. even though you feel like, oh, there's a line of people, there's there are moments where you're like, oh, I moved through too quick and I didn't I didn't get to look. You yeah. Know. And this is a benefit. Like, I wasn't going to see that mustache unless I'm going around slowly. And of course, this house is where you also see the storyteller reference the picture of her on the wall. So, yes, it's a very dark photo. I didn't want to. I can't see anything. Except, well, she is in there. It's. Oh, I, I can see her back here. That that I didn't have my good so. camera because I'm I knew if I, I keep looking at it, it's going to pop out at me. I, I couldn't take good pictures, so I didn't want to bring my good camera. So I just used my iPhone to take pictures. Sorry for the quality, um, but yeah, this this whole house. I mean, there wasn't. It is very in depth with the story of how you move through the town into the mine and then end. But uh, it was it was very cool to be able to see and take pictures in this one. Uh, the third. Uh, stop on the morning tour was american horror story and uh this this was another one that was just the details in this house you to truly see the amount of detail that goes into it you have to do this lights on tour you will not get it just by walking through the house um well you can tell they they took a lot of care in this house that's why i think this is definitely one of my favorite houses this year because because you just get that vibe, and it is definitely a house that I think begs to be gone through multiple times. Yeah. But it's even cooler knowing that you're saying there's even stuff that you oh you really have to kind of go through a lights on area to appreciate. Yeah, absolutely. And this was another one uh, as we've talked about. I've made my way through Murder House and Freak Show. I didn't get to make it to um, I didn't get to make it to Hotel yet. It's available on netflix october 4th so i will start watching mm. it then and catch up on it no spoilers no but i did i did get Don't a lot of spoilers in the house to go on netflix. i did and so i'm gonna i'm not gonna give the spoilers out yet because it's not available on netflix yet so i will be kind but this was one place if you haven't seen the the stuff that these ip houses are based on there will be spoilers um i was like the only person in the group who hadn't watched hotel yet so i just allowed the spoilers to to ruin it all for me I now know everything about Lady Gaga in that, and it just kind of bums me out, but I'll still enjoy it. But uh, fun fact, the first one I got out of, right out of the way was, why were the ones chosen that were chosen? I'm yeah, why, why were they? Yeah. Well. Because I'm surprised. Uh, honestly, after going through multiple ones, sorry, I put a cough drop in my mouth. Yeah. Um, I, I'm surprised they didn't do Asylum. But here is why they didn't. You Here's the exact reason why. Um, last year, obviously, we had uh, Shady Brook mm-hmm. being brought back. This year, you have Chance in the mental hospital. Oh, And so similar. that is why it's very similar. They didn't want to use Asylum because it was just too similar to all this other stuff. And, of course, they can't just drop Asylum and also throw Coven in. And then also with Coven, they said, I believe maybe Oliver said it as well, they just didn't feel like there was enough iconic memorable moments and scenes in there to really justify so that is why they chose to use the seasons that they did which kind of makes me nervous in a way oh that means they're probably not going to do it again exactly you know we kind of we were speculating oh well they're gonna they're gonna do this multiple times it's gonna become the new walking dead year after year isn't really adaptable well in that way either thus far but the new season it's kind of the same principle the new season is based around roanoke and they've actually had a non-intellectual property house in the past which was roanoke so i don't know is it too many years apart will they do it still will they not It'd be interesting. It'd be hard to really convey some of that storytelling, though, too, because it's told in that reenactment way. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, it, it because the show's taking such a drastic, um, you know, because it's an anthology show, it can do that, but it's trying to stay fresh and do a drastic, different type of narrative, which I appreciate, but. I don't know that that's going to... I don't. We'll see. I guess we'll yeah. just have to see. Yeah. So with this one, I'm just going to kind of point out some of the cool details to look at as you're walking through that I was referred to, so I won't give too much away on the story. Um, first off, in Murder House, all the stained glass windows that are used in there, it's all fake. Um, oh. mo- most of it. <laughs> sorry, most of it's fake. Uh, but it is actual replicas um, of the stained glass windows they actually used in murder house 
So if you really want to see the comparison, make sure you watch Murder House, then go into the house. Um, there is a little a little hidden secret in there. Um, there is a, a library book in one of the scenes uh, representing, you know, the daughter pulled out a library book. And it's, it's just sitting as you're walking through the house. You kind of actually have to look for it. But there's a little Easter egg in it that the last person who took out the library book was Tate Langdon. Oh, oh that's cool. Yeah. It's something I don't know if you can actually I don't know if you can actually see it without the lights on, but see, definitely that's why, why look I was for bummed that. there was no representation of and Tate he, in the house. He is in the house. He is in the house. We just apparently have never had the timing right that we've seen him. Mm. He's wearing the skeleton is mask. Is it the skeleton mask? Yes. Okay. That's what I was that's what, that's the thing I thought was missing most. I've I've been in that house three, four times now. I still haven't seen him. Mm. So but I do believe everyone that says that he is in there. I trust them all. Um, and it's actually cool. I passed over. Uh, sorry. This is, is your starting stomach to, grumbling? Or? Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> other things kind of cool to see in there. Whenever you walk into the uh, freak show element, the uh, there's the, the kind of uh, the wagons that they used for the, the freaks where they lived in. Oh, yeah. Those yeah. were actually reused from Dracula Untold. So, kind of, kind of a cool tidbit. Um, also, in the freak show section, you have to look for a Jack the Clown reference inside Twisty's uh, school bus. I do. I like, won't say I, where it is, that's but cool. I'll point it out to I like you. That, that you one's easy to the see. School bus too. I'm but you're so it. scared that you're not gonna, you're not gonna see it. You're most likely gonna walk right past it. Yeah. yeah. Um, one thing to say, I don't think it was really reported on, but in the uh, one scene in the where it's the museum of freaks they have now added ma petite in there oh good okay oh, she was fine. missing she yeah, yeah i thought that was good i i really like that that they did they um, tell you if that was from feedback from fans or what did no, they always it's plan just and elements just... get added in they could get added in until the final night oh it's cool just, awesome it's just how it goes um they had characters until the right up to the end i think because they're still hmm. advertising they're looking for people wow yeah, and people come and go. Some people start it and they don't want to keep doing it, you know. Yeah. yeah. And I think the last two cool things were then to add in the hotel section. A, they I don't know if this is in hotel the show. And don't but, tell uh, tell me. But in the house, they have added shining, the carpet from the shining into the actual Oh, that house. is oh. that is in the show. It is. Yeah. I I like that. It's almost worn out now, so by the time you go to see it, the house, it'll probably probably mm-hmm. be gone, but I remember reading, like, I saw the first episode of Hotel, and I remember reading something about that there were going to be references to The Shining in the show. I enjoyed that. And then another weird thing, in the weird blood transfusion kind of room with the coffins and stuff, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they actually bought a real working blood transfusion machine just to have in that room. Weird. Yeah. (laughs) It's very bizarre. But see, I've because I've doing my research for the show before. I've been reading other people's reviews of this tour as well. This isn't the only time they do that. Like some of the coffins in Lightning yeah. Gulch are real coffins. Yes. like they were really used. So they'd go all out and you know they were really used. Oh, they were real. Built to be no, used. they are real old. Like they're because they're old timey coffins. They were the real thing. <laughs> How do you get a used coffin? Universal can. You, you know what I mean? Like who's out there digging it up and dumping the bones? That grave are robbers. Yeah, <laughs> grave robbers. So that does it for the morning uh, portion of the tour. So I'm going to go. Then we had a little break for lunch, and we went into the afternoon tour. The first one we started with was Krampus. Um, I couldn't get a photo of the facade of that because ours, you walk in, and it's like looking yeah, straight it's, up. It's, it's yeah. hard to get that one from but this is where I got really impressed because I know we talked about Krampus. It was kind of weird. You just were going in and out. We didn't feel like it truly f- followed the story yeah. that well complete opposite it actually entirely follows the story now that i saw it so like you start off and you're walking through (laughs) shoot i'm gonna hurry this up because we're gonna have to get off because of the weather um you're walking through and the reason it goes out is it does follow the movie you know it starts off in the family home and everything's set up with that martha stewart christmas but then the the daughter goes outside to try to go to her boyfriend's and that's why you go outside and that's where you first see krampus up on the roof Yes, we saw him. Mm -hmm. The snowmen started to appear, but it was just like one kind of ugly one. But then you go into the boyfriend's house, and that's the one that's completely destroyed, Uh and Krampus has already wrecked havoc there. So then you go back outside to go to the other house where it's back to their house. That's why I was like, what? 
And that's so now it does make sense. It completely follows the story. Um, but 100%. I hundred percent. I think that does the house a disfavor for people that are. You know what I mean? Like I think it might maybe. Again, without the human characters in it, it kind of... Sorry, I'll let you hurry up yeah. because it's getting bad. So, a couple of things that I think you should really look for in here. There's a lot. This is so filled with so many little Easter eggs. Uh, the the code name for the house was Schnapps. Count how many <laughs> bottles of Schnapps are around the house. There are a, there, There's a good amount. Um, I'm sure some will get taken out because people can't just respect things. Um, they're in one scene... You can see the last year in the Halloween house or whenever we had the Halloween house two years ago, mm -hmm. there was a Mickey Mouse shirt in one of the closets. <laughs> that was a cool reference. It made its way back into this maze. So look for it as well as there That's are cool. two instances. Uh, Krampus is directed by Michael Doherty, of course, who directed my favorite Halloween anthology movie, Trick, Trick or, or Treat. Treat. And there are two Sam, two of Sam's lollipops that he has the little uh, pumpkin head with the bite taken out that he loves to stab people with. Um, so there are two of them in the house. So keep your eyes out for them. One, you have to turn around and look behind you actually to find. So it's very tough. Um, Mannheim Steamroller, there's a CD for them in there because Mannheim Steamroller comes every year for Christmas to Universal. <laughs> keep an eye out for that. And then the last part, the snow globes. I thought that in the movie, of course, the snow globes are Krampuses, and that's the people that he's wrecked havoc on. There is, of course, a snow globe of the house from the movie and the house you just walked through. However, you will also find the Amityville Horror House in one of them. Oh. You'll find the Halloween House in one of them. And then you will also find a one of the apartments in the New York section of... Um, of Universal Studios Florida that actually is a reference because it was a uh, it was very heavily used the year that they did Bloody Mary as a oh, icon cool. theme for it. So you you need to look at all those snow globes as much as you can and at least find the Amityville horror. But be careful because a Krampus will pop out at you while you're yeah. over there. So Krampus. Then we moved into uh, we moved into Halloween, which. This one was kind of disappointing in terms of the tidbits and Easter eggs. Uh, really, the only thing that I found like very interesting in this house was the fact that the whole, you know, how they brought back the Halloween three trick or treaters. The trick or treat. Yeah. Trick or treat. The only reason why they brought this back this year is because apparently the sound design and mix to get that trick or treat perfect for the first house was such a pain in the butt. That the guy who did it insisted that they reuse it <laughs> again this year for Halloween. Um, other than that, I mean, this house is very straightforward. It's I, I really can't say that there is any special details to look for. Again, uh, go watch the movie before you go in the house. It follows it perfectly, step by step as you go through. Um, a very good job of it. But I'll wrap things up here with uh, with. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which was our last house. This one is where the lights on really changed my entire opinion of it. And also watching the movie the day before I went to uh, do the tour. Um, the detail you see in that first room when you walk in with all the skeletons and everything on there, mm -hmm. it is film authentic. Not, wow. not uh, I. Most of it is film authentic. There is like in the movie they have the bench made out of bones and stuff yeah they couldn't get it a hundred percent perfect but it is as close as anyone could probably get to it being a hundred percent film authentic oh no i i felt that when i went through that um yeah. it, it was it was incredible seeing it, it with feel on, very uneasy it's so the the house is absolutely disgusting so disgusting um and it's and then other little things like the wallpaper that's something to look at something you wouldn't normally look at it actually goes from like animal skins in one room Ooh. then it goes into like butcher's paper oh as as um that's cool as leatherface starts butchering people essentially something very cool with that and um i like that they had the door in that house <laughs> yeah i i like that they had that too it really set the scene it, it, um, it those loud banging noises really make you uncomfortable and you know? this was another one they they really did go scene by scene you do you barely notice it but like, I thought it was kind of a mishmash walking around there, but it literally, like, you know, in the movie, 
she's upstairs and she jumps out the window for the final time, runs away, gets picked up by the truck driver, and then movie ends after a little bit of this and that. But even in this house, too, without really knowing, you actually jump out the window. It's just hard to tell whenever uh. you have everything going on. But it's, it really, really does follow the story, and I can't say that enough. That's, that's what it does. Um, other little tidbits in this house I think that were cool. There are reused props from Dollhouse of the Damned in Ooh. one room. So I will say that rat room is flashing, so it's very hard to kind of notice those little things. Um, last year in Freddy vs. Jason, they had... Um, they reused a prop specifically for that. I won't say which one it is, but I it is something for what it is. It is something that you might actually see. And the final cool thing, which most people will never ever see, but as you're walking out, of course, of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, there are all like the cars and props and hidden hidden leather faces. Well, the final car all the way at the end is the car from a couple years ago in The Walking Dead that had mm. Sophia stay put, stay here oh. written on it, and it still has that written oh. on the car. They That's never cool. they put the car there, but it still has the original Walking Dead stuff on there. That. So if you like walk a little forward, I'm sure they'll let you look at it and see it. But um, yeah, it's just it's cool. It's it's really cool. A lot of details just involved in it. So. I guess what I'm saying is if you go in with the idea that you're going to see a lot of cool details or if you're too afraid to see the event, I think it's incredible. Um, it's it's worth the price. If your goal is to take pictures, it's going to be a disappointment. Yeah, You're going to feel like it's not worth it. For what I did, I do feel like because I wanted to take the pictures, I feel like $60 would have been a fair price. Yeah, um, for sure. But that's my opinion on it. Um, to each their own. You know what you're interested in. Might be good for you. Might not. Um, but it is an option available. And um, I, I think it's worth it to at least try once. I really do. Hmm. So I was... The, the the knowledge and the movie trivia and everything that you get in, I think it's it balances it out. It makes it a worthwhile event. But, you know, my mind could change on that. So that's just me. But... That's all I have today. Make sure you're following us on social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, all that. You can find everything at disunplug.com. Um, and, of course, as I said earlier, next week we will be doing the Halloween Horror Nights Hollywood slash Orlando comparison. So get very mm -hmm. excited for that. But that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. Hit that music. We will be back with you next week with also resolutions, of course. But until then... See you later.